Hey guys, welcome back to Office 365 Concepts. Today we are going to talk about webinars. We will discuss how webinars are different than a Teams meeting, what features are included within webinars. We will learn how to set up a webinar. We will learn how to customize the registration form and so on. So let's get started. If you compare webinars with a standard Teams meeting, webinars are more structured where you can manage attendees registration you can run a presentation, you can analyze the attendee data, and you can organize a meeting with up to 1000 attendees. To create a webinar, you will go to calendar tab. On the top right, you will click drop down arrow and then click webinar. Under title, you can choose a title for the webinar. You can modify the start date and time for the webinar, and you can set the duration by modifying the end date. For example, we can extend the duration for three hours and 30 minutes. And if you want to set up a webinar for one hour or more, you can select any time from here, for example, two hour 30 minutes. And this way you can increase the duration for the webinar. You can also add description for this webinar that you want to share with attendees. Under organizer, you can see the name of the organizer of this webinar. Concepts is the user who is logged into this team's application. So by default, concepts will be the organizer of this webinar. If you want to add co-organizers for this webinar, you can add them under co-organizers. For example, let me add Bob Ross as co-organizers. So concepts is organizer of this webinar and Bob Ross is co-organizer of this webinar. If you want to add presenters within your organization for this webinar who are going to present their screen, you can add those users here. For example, let me add few users here. If you want to add external users as presenters for this webinar, click add external presenters. And here, if you have external users within your Azure AD environment in your Azure AD tenant, so you can look for the user here. This is the external account, which is already added in my Azure AD tenant. So this way you can add external users as presenters who are allowed to present their screens within this webinar. You can add up to 20 external users as presenters in a webinar. Under event access, you can make the webinar public or you can change it to your organization. By default, the webinar is set as public. That means it is open to anyone inside and outside of your organization to register. Anyone on the internet can view the event page and they can register for this webinar. But if you want to organize a webinar only for your organization, you can change it from public to your organization, which will make the event page and the registration available only to the people within your organization. Once you have made all the required changes, click save and send invites. The next section is presenter bios. Under presenter bios, you can modify the profile of the presenters. To modify the profile of the presenter, click edit next to the profile name. Here you can update his LinkedIn profile, Twitter profile. You can add the bio for the presenter. Even you can add a profile picture of the presenter as well. Same way you can modify the profile for the external presenter. When you add an external user as a presenter for a webinar, he receives a unique link to enter the webinar without waiting in the lobby. But to join a webinar, the external user would require a Teams license to be assigned on his account. If you want to share the link manually to the external user to join the webinar, you can click unique join link. You can copy the link from here and you can share it with the external user. Next is theming. Under this option, you can customize the logo and color theme of the webinar site. Next is registration. Under registration, we have configuration. Here you can set a limit on how many people can register for the webinar. When the users will receive a registration email, they will have to provide these details like first name, surname, email address, and Microsoft consent. If you want to add more fields in the registration email, you can click add field and you can add more fields for example city and you can make it required and like this you can add other fields as well once done click save next is emails when you set up a webinar ms teams send automated emails to the attendees this is the list of all the emails or the reminders those will be sent to the users 
There are different types of webinar emails that inform and remind people about the registration, approval status, event details, and so on. For example, the users will receive registration email if the registration is approved. If the registrations are full, they will receive waitlisting email. If the registration is rejected, they will receive rejection email. If the webinar is canceled, they will receive cancellation email. The users who have successfully registered for the webinar, they will receive a reminder one hour before the webinar starts. And when the webinar is completed and the recording is available, they will receive another email. If you want to preview any of the emails, you can click preview email. And this is how the email will look like. You can see the theme that you can modify under theming section, and you can see the date and time of the webinar. Next options are reports and recordings. The reports and recordings will be available once the webinar is completed. Now let's see how you can modify the webinar settings. Go to details and click meeting options. From here, you can modify who can bypass the lobby. If you click this drop down arrow, you can see the list of the options that you can configure here. But we are setting up this webinar for our user, for the internal users. So I will leave it as default that says people who were invited. You can manage audio and video settings. If you want, you can disable mic for all attendees or you can disable their camera and you can enable cart feature for the attendees as well. Cart stands for communication access real time translation. This is a service that listens to the speech and translates the speech to text. As a meeting organizer, you can set up and offer cart captioning to your attendees. By default, this option is disabled, but if you want to allow this feature for your audience, you can turn this option from here. So let's click apply. And close this window. Now we have customized and set up a webinar, so it's time to publish it. To publish the webinar, you will click publish site, click publish. As soon as you will publish the webinar site, the attendees will receive a registration email. You can also copy the registration link from here and you can share it with the users to register. Let's copy this link and paste it in a browser. To access this link, you need an account that has Teams license assigned. Let me log in with a user that has Teams license assigned. So this is the registration form. Here you can see the name of the speakers and who are going to present in this webinar. And this is the registration link where this user needs to register. Here, the user will add the required fields. For example, test, test city, accept the terms and conditions and click register. So the registration is successful and it says we sent you a confirmation email to this email address. Let's go back to Teams application and let's join the webinar. So this user is the organizer of this webinar. So now we have joined the webinar, but the meeting is not started yet. When the attendees will join this webinar, you can start the meeting by clicking start meeting and the recording will also start. Let's click start meeting. Click again and we can see the recording is started and the webinar is live. Let's assume the webinar is completed and let's end the webinar. And let's go back. To reports so we can see the report is generated now and it shows how many users viewed the registration page how many users registered the page how many users attended the webinar how many users cancelled the registration you can see the meeting duration and if we go to recordings we can see the recording here and if you want to share this recording with the attendees you will click publish click publish again and the users who registered for this webinar will receive an email with a link to the recording. So that is all for now. If you found this video helpful and informative, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to write them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.